Hello and welcome to the inaugural video of Lazy Astronomy. This is a channel where I'm going to try to show you all the different ways that I end up trying to take great astro images while also being pretty lazy. So the first thing that I think would be a good way to start off with that is looking at my new camera that just got in today, the Attic Horizon One-Shot Color Camera. So for those who may be visiting this channel don't know much about uh, astrophotography, a one-shot color camera is, in my opinion, the lazy way to take good astrophotos. Uh, it allows you to take them just like you would with a point-and-shoot camera um, or a DSLR type camera. The difference being that they can be much better on things like noise, which always is a big deal in your images. So the ATIC Horizon here is actually using the same kinds of sensors that you would find in an average DSLR camera, which is a CMOS sensor. Uh, this is one of the first cameras, actually the first camera that ATIC has made that uh, actually uses the CMOS sensor. Um, and mainly that's been for a variety of reasons uh, in comparison to CCD chips. Uh, but nowadays, the prices on CMOS and the improvements in the technology have made it much more affordable for the kind of size that you're getting and everything else. But it also makes it uh, something that's really good for what's called fast imaging, where you're not taking very long exposures and you're using a, uh, a system that can run at a very high uh, or very low uh, F ratio. So for me, uh, I have a CPC 800 Celestron 8-inch telescope. And what I do is I'm going to be using what's called a hyperstar lens uh, that you can actually put on the front of the telescope instead of at the back. And what that'll do is that'll take it to being an F2 system, uh, which means that I can take very, very quick exposures, you know, 30 seconds or less, and not really have to do a lot of things like tracking or bias frames as much. At least that's the hope. What that should allow me to do is take some really good astrophotos without having to spend hours and hours and hours and hours uh, taking pictures and having a lot more complicated mount setups. Lazy. This is what I'm going for. So let's take a look at the ATIC or ATIC, I'll say it five different ways during this video, uh, Horizon camera. So first of all, I really do like the slip case here. Uh, the previous attic boxes, in my opinion, didn't look as good. Um, and while, you know, underneath is just kind of a plain brown box, I like this. I like the design using kind of the, the, the astronomical kind of table here, you know, kind of like what you would find in a sky and telescope magazine or something. Really makes you feel like you're gonna get in and look at everything with this. At least that's the hope. So, let's open this bad boy up. Oh my goodness, this whole box lays flat. By the way, I like that. This makes breakdown of the box a little bit easier if you wanted to. Nice quick start manual. Oh, so I, like, I like things like this. Where we've got all the possible tables that we would wanna look at for different camera specs and things like that. Uh, very nice. And importantly, the software. Now obviously you can download this kind of stuff directly from Attic, which is fine, but this is one of the main reasons why I bought this camera. There's other cameras that have the same sensor in them that also do a lot of the same things, but Attic has also released the Attic Infinity software with this, which should allow for uh, a lot more kind of what's known as closer to video astronomy, but with this camera it will be more like live stacking of images. So as I'm taking images, I can actually see some early results of how good they're turning out as they're being stacked up one after another after another, uh, which should make this, uh, in my opinion, hopefully a lot more enjoyable experience during my imaging sessions. Uh, but also, the other thing that I'm really looking forward to with it is this has built into that Infinity software is live broadcast to YouTube. So anyone that uh, is watching this, uh, hopefully you may start seeing on this same channel uh, videos of me while I'm doing some of my imaging sessions so that you can also kind of take a look at this stuff as it's going through. 
So let's see what else we got in here. Packing materials. <laughs> Quality check to make sure that I got everything that I should get in here. I guess all the boxes are checked. Box O cables. And I think, well, this is looks like a plug of some type. It might be for changing out desiccants. Car battery adapter or car cigarette lighter adapter. For most that uh, that aren't too familiar, a lot of times when you're out in the field, uh, which literally may be a field somewhere, uh, you're not using, uh, you don't have a power cable around right an actual like wall outlet somewhere so you end up bringing batteries and running these things off of it usb free cable very nice to have uh, this is a usb 3 camera which means that it can pull off the uh the large megapixel images that it's going to be taking a whole lot faster when you're using a usb 3 cable that should run a lot faster than my old camera did Now to the big guy, the camera itself. So here we go. Always nice to see things in high quality Ziploc bags. All right, the ATIC Horizon. Uh, for folks who have seen previous ATIC cameras, you may have noticed they normally have a distinctive kind of red metallic finish on them. This one obviously is not. Uh, this is to kind of show off that it is now uh, their first CMOS censored camera as opposed to CCD. Uh, you can see a lot of these vents around here. This is because this is also a cooled camera. So one thing when you that's different as i mentioned this had the same kind of sensors that you would find in a dslr camera but the problem is especially when you're imaging out in the summer like it is right now uh, obviously in, i'm in dallas it can be very very hot uh, and that introduces a lot of just inherent noise into the pictures that you're taking however if you use a cooled camera like this it can get down a lot lower than the ambient temperature in fact this one i think goes between 35 and 40 degrees Celsius, I think, lower than the ambient temperature, uh, which is pretty crazy. Um, at that point, you have very, very little noise uh, on the chip, which obviously gives you a lot more actual data on your pictures that you can work with. On the back here, you can see we've got our power plug, our fan uh, to do our cooling, as well as our USB 3.0. Uh, connection. So this, uh, I'm very happy to see. The early review units I saw this actually had a micro connector on them, and all the pictures I saw online when I was ordering this uh, still, I think, seem to show the micro connection on it. And micro, while it's nice to have a small cord end, one, in the dark, it's a lot harder to get that little cable in. It's hard enough when you got the lights on. Uh, and two, if, you know, you know, with your phone or any other tablet device or something like that, they can get wiggly after a while. So having the nice, large, solid connection here for USB 3 should keep this much more stable uh, long term. I'm really glad that ATIC decided to make that enhancement. Um, so what's inside on the lens here. So taking this off, you can see that big fat CMOS sensor. Uh, now, as I mentioned before, this is a one-shot color version, um, not, a, not a monochrome. Um, a lot of people will get the monochrome and then put filters in front. So you'll take a red image, a green image, and a blue image, and then you'll combine them together. Um, You'd certainly do that. Obviously, long term, that's probably the best way, especially in very light polluted skies like where I live. However, as I mentioned before, I'm lazy. So for this, I really like the idea of the one shot color. I like something that would be fast on the acquisition of the images. Um, and then on that, uh, that setup I'm going to do for my Hyperstar and even for the normal imaging, I'm going to be using um, a Bader moon and sky glow filter with uh, an infrared cut. 
uh, for anyone who's kind of not into this and don't expect that to mean much to you, other than it's meant to remove as much of the light pollution as it can while still allowing kind of natural color to flow through. Uh, that won't be perfect. I'll still be limited in terms of how much visual magnitude I can look at and things like that uh, before I start getting just overwhelmed by the light pollution. Um, but the one thing that I don't really have time and energy to do too much is drive out several hours to a dark site. So I'm going to try not to do that uh, as much as I can and see how much I can get just out of my backyard. Um, one, it's a lot more comfortable uh, in the long term. Uh, two, it also is just kind of the lazy thing to do. So I'm going to try uh, through both this camera and this channel uh, to really see how far you can push lazy to get good results. Uh, and that may sound kind of silly, um, but I've got a really nice telescope uh, that just isn't built for long exposure deep sky astrophotography. It's an eight inch telescope, which typically is a little bit bigger than what you would want. Uh, it's F10, which is typically a little slower than what you would want. And it's got an out, out azimuth mount, which means it can turn this way and this way. If you want something for the sky, a lot of times you want something at an angle that turns this way. And, uh, and so it doesn't track as long. So if I really want to work with it, and it's great, it's a great telescope, very easy to use, fantastic for looking at planets, uh, you really want to be able to, um, if you want to use that kind of scope for deep sky, you want to be able to take images fast. So once again, that's what a, this hyperstar allows me to do. It lets me take something that would normally be um, a five minute exposure I can take in less than a minute, uh, which is fantastic. And uh, at the same point in time, because it's a fast exposure, I need a camera that's capable of reading that information very quickly with low noise um, and also has small enough pixels uh, to be able to capture all the information coming off of a large scope working very fast. And that's specifically what this guy does. My last camera was the ATIC 314L, and I could never really get it to work right. I've posted a few pictures here and there uh, over the last couple of years, and they never just looked, they just never looked very good. Um, as I'm really kind of getting back into the, the hobby in a lot more focused way, um, I started looking around and I saw the calculators showing pixel sizes for F ratios and apertures, and I started putting them in and I found out this guy fits very well for both the hyperstar mode when it's hooked in like this and when it's in the rear of the telescope like normal. Uh, the, 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 the pixel sensor size and everything like that and the read noise on it is, is really good for working in both modes. Um, the last thing, so as I mentioned before, this goes in front of the scope. You may sit there and think, well, okay, lazy astronomy. This goes in front of the scope. Isn't that where your light comes from? Well, that's kind of the point of that telescope design. And I'll link off to what a, a schmidt cass grain telescope kind of looks like in the description. But you've got another mirror right in the dead center of that scope. And as you focus in, the mirror actually disappears from your field of view. And it's the light all around the donut of that that makes your image. Well, that allows this guy to come in and instead of being a mirror, bouncing it back to the end of the scope, it actually runs out through a lensing system that not only speeds up the, the focal ratio of the scope, but also does some field flattening and correcting as well. And so when it comes out that side, you can then literally hook this on. And as I mentioned before, it's a donut, right? Well, one of the things that you want with a camera like this is something that really neatly fits inside the diameter of that. And you can tell here, it's very, very, very close to the diameter of what the hyperstar is going to be blocking out. So I'm really not going to be losing any more of that light than what I would be losing just by having the mirror there at all, which is the way the telescope operates normally. Uh, my last camera was about this big. So in addition to not really fitting the pixel size, uh, that I needed to take good quality images. It was also a lot bigger. I was losing a lot more light and my images weren't as good. So that's the unboxing of 
the Attic Horizon, Atic Horizon, one shot color CMOS camera. Um, haven't seen a lot of this on YouTube yet. This is still a pretty new camera here. Um, and uh, so I'm really excited to be one of the first folks, hopefully, to really try it out um, from what I would call not even just like a pure amateur perspective, because I'm still on kind of the early end of this, um, but also from a lazy astronomy perspective, really looking at this from backyard conditions without uh, a super sophisticated mount, um, really just using something that's a high quality, but still not, not really your first scope, but your first kind of big kid scope. Um, you know, and really kind of looking to see what I can do with this without having to put in so much time and effort to essentially drive me away from the hobby. Um, so I hope you enjoyed looking at this. Um, you know, uh, can't recommend enough the, the, the software that I've seen with the ATICs that I've used in the past. Um, I think really my, my last gripes with my old camera was just it was the wrong fit for my scope. Uh, so this one should be a much better fit. I'm really looking forward to getting to use it. So thank you for watching. Uh, and hopefully on the next video, you'll see some live real-time streaming of me doing some imaging. Thanks.